Hello, everybody. I'm Happy Caldwell, and I want to thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Live. We're continuing this week in what I call the art series, the art of rest, the art of watching, the art of continuing. And today, we're going to talk about the art of communication. This is really special. So I want to invite you to stay tuned for today's Arkansas Alive. Arkansas Alive starts right now. I was invited to um, participate in a, a conference. Uh, a ministerial association is inviting its next gen members, young, young members, ministers, uh, to participate in a conference. And one of the areas that they're going to teach or share is the art of rest. And so I asked them if I could address that, if I could speak to that. And I said, also, the art of communication, the art of um, strategic leadership, the art of war, etc. cetera. And uh, they said, yes, that'd be great. We'd love to have you. Well, uh, I asked uh, the purpose of this is to teach the younger generation, the younger ministers who sometimes think they don't need to hear from anybody else, especially the uh, older uh, statesmen or whatever. This new generation, I'm in control. I'm doing my thing. This is my time. But that is e error because you should always listen and learn from those that have preceded you. Because there is wisdom from experience. There's, there's wisdom of times. There are different times. Ecclesiastes says there are different times uh, that we live in. Everybody has a different sphere of influence. And so we need to hear and learn uh, so we can um, operate um, correctly and effectively and gain the most of our time uh, of ministry. And I've often shared this with younger ministers and others, don't have to be younger, but others who have problems in this area. And that is the art of communication. And this is really powerful. I, I really enjoyed this one more than any, the art of communication. Communication is an art. You might remember the mantle that they gave President Ronald Reagan, the great communicator. Well, he, he was a great communicator. And the art of communication, as we go back to the definition of the art, it is skill that is learned, uh, that is practiced, that is observed. Well, Ronald Reagan certainly had a sphere of influence around him in Hollywood as an actor where he learned the art of communication. And he carried that on into governor of California and the president of the United States. And he was a great communicator. So was Dr. Martin Luther King. And you can just go down the line of all those that were great communicators. And uh, it's an art. It's a skill that is learned either by practice, or by performance, by study. Uh, communication is not just a letter, a phone call, an email, a text message. That's not the art of communication. I like to say it this way. The art of communication is when you sit down with somebody face to face, eyeball to eyeball, body language included, and you listen and you speak. Communication is two ways. It's both speaking and listening. It's not listening so you can give an answer. And it's not speaking just so you can get your point across. It's a two-way street. It is the ability to communicate with somebody. Pastors especially need this skill, this art. And it can be developed. I don't mean developed phony. I don't mean play acting. I don't mean rehearsing. But the art of communication is to hear what the other person is saying and respond with any helpful information, any uh, warnings, any critiques. Um, it, 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 let me say it this way. Communication is the art, the skill of 
te- or a technique of expressing information effectively. Um, too many times we just talk on and on and on, and we think our much talking is much communication. But no, there doesn't need to be a lot of talking. There needs to be intelligent expression uh, of information that is effective. I remember my friend Jerry Savelle, who had built a... Uh, Actually, he was going to build a medical clinic in Kenya, Africa. And he had been given the land by the First Lady of Kenya. And Oral Roberts Roberts Ministries was going to supply the doctors and nurses. And so Jerry was going to build the building. They already had the land. And Oral Roberts Ministries was going to supply the doctors and nurses from the City of Faith Hospital. This was several years ago. And so Jerry told me, and he's told this publicly, but I remember he he told me privately how this was not only a great opportunity, a great honor to take his father in the faith, or Roberts, uh, with him because they were going to work together to build this medical clinic. And so he said, uh, we flew over and... Uh, sat down with all the (coughs) tribal chiefs that were going to participate in this event. And he said, and Oral was sitting at the head of the table. Of course, all the people were honored to have Oral Roberts there. And Oral was sitting there. And Jerry said he noticed that uh, Oral was sitting there as all these tribal chiefs were talking. Oral seemed like he was not paying attention. And Jerry said, I watched him. He said he was writing on a notepad. He just wrote notes, and then he'd go over them again, and he'd make it bigger and smaller and blah, blah, blah. And so finally, Jerry said, what do I do? I I honor my spiritual father so much. uh, I don't don't want to offend him or be disrespectful. But he said, I walked around to see uh, what he was doing. And and he said, I said, Brother Roberts, these, these tribal leaders have come from long distances to hear you, and they want to know about this medical clinic. And he said, and you're doodling on your notepad. <laughs> Jerry said it took a lot of fear and trembling for him to, to say that to Oral Roberts. And he said he looked down at the notepad, and Oral turned the, the pad around and shoved it in front of him so he could see it. And he said what he had written on that notepad in big letters was too much talk. Too much talk. And he said, yeah, I'm a man of action, not a man of talking. And there's too much talk. Have you ever been in one of those situations? It could be a family situation. It could be a a board of a corporation you're on, a board of a church, a ministry, whatever. And it, the talking just goes on and on and on. And you just want to scream. You just want to say, okay, hold it. What is the point? What is the issue that you are trying to uh, convey here? The art of communication is not the art of talking. It, it's not in writing letters. It's not in emails and text messages. You haven't, you haven't completed the art of communication when you just send a message or a mail or a note. The art of communication is the art of the technique of expressing information effectively. And when you've done that, sit down, be quiet, don't talk anymore. Here is what I am communicating. And I know this from working with Brother Roberts in different venues, He always wanted to hear what you had to say. When he started uh, what was known as the uh, uh, International Convention of Faith Ministries, uh, he started that when he was 68 years old. He called 27 of us to meet him in Dallas at the hotel conference room there at the Hyatt, and he wanted to share what God had spoken to him about uh, what he was to do in the latter years of his life. 
he wanted to reach out to ministers that had been kicked out of their denomination because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he wanted to gather them and he wanted to minister to them, which we did for 10 years, uh, actually 20 years. And he, after he had shared the vision, which didn't take any time at all, because he had the art of communication. He knew the technique of expressing information effectively. It didn't take a long time. And after he got through, he went around the table to all 27 of us, and he said, now I'd like to hear from each one of you what you think about what I just said. And so he went around the room, and he uh, listened to every one of us, what we had to say, our comments. And um, he, he was an effective communicator. In fact, he, he would fill the room with his presence when he walked in. I'll never forget, I had him speak at one of our minister's conferences one time in Tulsa. And uh, he, when he finished his 30, 40 minute uh, session, he turned it back over to me and I walked up to the platform and I said, Brother Roberts, I just want to thank you for coming. You've honored us. And man, I have never learned so much in, in such a short time in all my life. He got up off the front row, started walking up to the platform. I thought, uh-oh, what's he going to do? He walked up. He stood beside me and he looked at me in the face and he said, tell me three things that you just learned from what I said. And, of course, it got silent in the room, and I was so thankful that I had not just fluffed that out and said, oh, well, you know, great speech, and I learned a lot from it. No, he meant business. He said, tell me three things that you learned. And I rattled them off, one, two, three. I, ha I really meant what I said, and I said what I meant. And when I said those th three things, he smiled, and he went and sat down. Because he said, you'd be surprised at the people that don't know what you've said after you've said it because the art of communication, the technique or the expressing of the information was not effective and it was not made clear. When he built the City of Faith, and I'd been over there to see it before they opened it, he sat down with his head doctor, Dr. Winslow, and he invited several of us to come over and listen to the initial conversation. Oral got a, a whiteboard and he drew on it with a magic marker. And he said, this is what I want. And he said, and I'm going to draw it out for you. Now, there were architects, there were medical doctors, there were people from the community. And he said, this is what I want to build. And you're going to build it. So I'm going to tell you what I want. Now, listen to what I have to say. I'm not saying exactly like he said, it, but he drew on the whiteboard and uh, he drew what he wanted and said why he wanted it. And he wrote out things. Well, when he was through, he sat down. And when they tried to, to restate uh, what he said, he would get up and say, no, that's not what I said. Here it is. He'd do it again. He was an effective communicator, but he knew what he wanted. He knew what God had told him to do. And they built that um, cityplex now, it's called. They built that city of faith hospital exactly as he told them to. But he had to effectively communicate and express the information uh, that he wanted. That's the art of communication. It's not just information. It's the technique of expressing information correctly and effectively. And I look for these things every time I see a TV program on VTN or if I watch the secular news, and especially if... A politician is speaking. I, I listen to him sometimes on the radio on a news broadcast, and I am amazed at how ineffective in communication our leaders are. They really can't communicate a point. In fact, most of them don't know what they're talking about. And secondly, uh, they don't want to say what they're really thinking for fear that it'll come back to bite them later. So they evade and avoid the question. They'll rumble, rumble, ramble all the way around the question and never get to the point. When the question could be answered with a yes or no. And sometimes reporters say, just yes or no, sir. No, just yes or no, ma'am. No, they go all the way around the mulberry bush, so to speak, and they don't ever say anything. 
And that's, some of that is by design. It's on purpose because they don't want to commit themselves. But I am amazed at how many people in leadership cannot communicate effectively. So as we've learned, the art of communication is to learn the skill of communicating. And you practice. And I think the biggest hurdle, the biggest thing to overcome in communication is to be a listener, to listen to what people say. When I do marriage, when I did marriage counseling as a pastor for 35 years, I would always ask the wife to express her feelings and what she was expecting in the marriage. And then I would ask the husband, did you hear what she just said? And nine times out of 10, he didn't have a clue. He didn't know what in the world was wrong with his wife. (laughs) I was trying to show him, if you listen to her, she'll tell you what's wrong in your marriage and she'll tell you what she wants out of the marriage and what she's willing to put into and give in the marriage. But most husbands are so self-centered and so ignorant and they don't understand the wife, the woman, uh, their, their help meet. So the marriage continues to flounder and sometimes fail when it could be salvaged if they would just learn the art of communication. Now, I'll tell you the first thing you have to do if you're listening to your husband or wife, and you, especially the husbands, if you want to effectively communicate uh, <clears throat> with your spouse and you want to uh, benefit your marriage, then just listen. Just listen. That's all. Nine times out of ten, uh, a wife will tell you, I just want my husband to listen to me. She said, I don't necessarily want him to fix the problem. I don't necessarily want him to take the blame. I just want him to listen. Are you getting that, men, husbands? Just listen to what your wife is saying. That's the art of communication. And you can't listen reading the newspaper, watching a ball game, You can't listen with a distraction. You have to shut up, turn it off, and listen to what your wife is saying. And you will eventually develop the art of communication. Now, let's go over to uh, Genesis chapter 1. And I want to take this. I was meditating on this the other day, and these things began to come to me. Genesis chapter 1. And let's look at... Uh, verse 26, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Male and female created he them. Now God is a spirit. So God created man a spirit being. He said, I'm going to create man in my image. And God said unto them. Now we're talking about the art of communication. God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, every seeding seed, which is upon the earth and every tree in the, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. Now God went on to tell them out of every tree in the garden, you can freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it in the day that you eat thereof. You shall surely die. The word dies plural two deaths, spiritual and physical death. Spiritual death would be separation from God. God created man for fellowship. He made him a speaking spirit so they could communicate, so they could have dialogue, learn to talk to God, learn to communicate. The art of communication is a skill that is developed. So one day as I was studying for the ministry early in my Christian life and I had converted a bedroom into an office. I moved the bed out and I had a desk and a chair. I was kneeling down beside the bed one morning and I was taking a course through the Bible. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, now today, today is a very important day. Today, uh, I am going to talk to you 
And he said, I'm not going to tell you anything uh, that's a great revelation. I'm just going to talk. I thought, oh, boy, this ought to be interesting. He's not going to tell me anything that's a great revelation. I would think anything God says is a revelation. But he said, no, I'm just going to talk. He said, I just want you to learn to recognize my voice. So you will always know when I'm talking to you and when I'm not talking to you. Uh, <clears throat> the Bible says don't follow the voice of a stranger. So you, you have to learn the art of communication, talking to God. And when you talk to God, or I should say, let him talk to you, you don't do all the talking. You do the listening. Back to a, a story about Brother Roberts. He and I were visiting one morning in a ministerial conference. They had invited him to attend. He was not speaking. And I was the first speaker. And I was back there in the green room. And he and I were visiting, sitting on the couch. And all of a sudden, a young minister walked up, introduced himself to Brother Roberts and said, Hi, I'm so-and-so. Brother Roberts, glad to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And for the next three, four, five minutes, however long it was, this young minister told Brother Roberts everything he was doing in his ministry. And I watched Brother Roberts because you remember I taught one lesson on the art of watching. I watched him. And he sat there very respectful, very loving and kind. And he sat there with his arms folded like this. I, I watched his body language and most of the time when he would do that. That means you better be saying something that's worth something because <laughs> he's listening intently. And he just sat there with his arms like this. And, and uh, sometime during the uh, men's conversation or dialogue, to Brother Roberts, Earl would look over at me and go like this. And when the man finished, now Brother Roberts never said a word. He never opened his mouth. He never responded. This guy was doing all the talking. <laughs> when he said, nice to meet you, Brother Roberts. Uh, have a great day. And turned and walked off. And Brother Roberts just looked over at me and went like, here's a guy who knew very little talking to a man that knows everything. You know what I mean by that. <laughs> he's talking to a man that's been preaching the word more years than he's old, the, the young minister. And he's doing all the talking. <laughs> you have to learn to listen. That's part of the art of communication. And so God said, I'm going to create man in my image and likeness, I'm going to make him a spirit being like I am. And I'm going to give him the ability to speak to me and hear me speak to him. Have you got it? The art of communication. The skill, the technique of expressing information effectively. So God told Adam and Eve, he said, now, I don't want you to eat of the fruit of the, uh, fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but you can eat of all the other fruits. So, Along comes the serpent and he tempts Eve and he said, uh, God does know. Uh, and, and he said, you shall not surely die. Has God told you you would die? She said, yes, we can't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, we'll die. He said, God, God knows you will not die for God knows the days you eat thereof. Your eyes will be open. You'll be as God's knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, tree to desire to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave to her husband with her and he did eat. And exactly what God said would happen, happened. Immediately they were separated from God, which is spiritual death. They no longer had any communication with God. They hid themselves. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. So, the eyes of them were opened. They knew they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together, made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves. And God called unto him, Adam. And he said, where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. Now, God said, who told you you were naked? And why did he hide himself? He said he was afraid. 
He was separated from God. Fear came into the human race because of Adam's disobedience. Well, now, why did they disobey God? Why didn't they listen to what God said? Why didn't they hear? God is an effective communicator. He told them exactly what to do in so many words. They didn't listen and they didn't obey. So the art of communication was lost in the human race after Adam's sin. Go with me over to Genesis. We have record of this. Genesis 11, verse 1. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. The whole earth was of one speech and of uh, one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said uh, one to another, Go to, let us make brick, burn them thoroughly. And they made brick for stone and slime and they had for mortar. And they said, are you listening to me? They said, uh, let's go and build us a city, a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make us a name. Now, this was totally uh, self-centeredness. This was pride. This was arrogance. This was almost similar to what Satan said when he was cast out of heaven. He wanted to be God and he was going to come in and take over. And here, these people, they said, let's make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And the Lord said, the people is one. They have all one language. Did you get it? And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Now, I'll have more comment about this tomorrow because we're running out of time. When they were in obedience to God and they have one language, they had effective communication. But when they disobeyed God and said, we're going to build a name for ourselves, their languages were confounded and they no longer could understand each other. We see that today. Join me tomorrow for Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever you're watching, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.